Hey there, happy Monday all. Tonight we are going to be starting the new Aurafil block of the month. So this is March's Aurafil block of the month. So thank you for joining me. Um, my name is Alyssa Thomas from Penguin and Fish where we make cute embroidery kits for the beginning crafter. And I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. That's 9.30 Eastern and 6.30 Pacific. And it's a time that we can relax and craft together. Uh, I typically work on projects from beginning to end so you can be part of the whole process along the way and uh, give me your good advice <laughs> if I'm stuck uh, like we may be today. I got, I have, uh, I have some uh, issues today with, with uh, the project in <laughs> my supplies, uh, trying to raid my supplies from home. So I'll take you guys' advice. Uh, <laughs> and it's just a fun time that we can just hang out and craft together. So thank you guys for joining me. Uh, if you're just popping in, we are starting the Orphil block of the month, the March block of the month. So it is the Dolomites by Carol Lillis Shaw. I just have a black and white copy here, but it is the little mountains. I'll show you with the digital uh, picture of it in a sec on my iPad. Uh, but it is some pretty greens, pretty blues and pretty grays. Uh, we are gonna get going on this and it is raw edge applique. Uh, you can do it uh, foundation paper piecing. I believe there's a pattern link uh, on the site for that, but I am attempting to do it with raw edge applique. However, I am super low on my supplies, so we are gonna have to get creative here. Uh, tonight, I thought we would pick fabrics and kind of uh, get all set up so we're ready to go by, uh, by tomorrow, I'll really get going. And I think we'll for sure finish this uh, by the end of the week. So, all right, I am going to flip you guys around. Oh, so uh, yes, it's not the granny squares. This is our bonus week. So uh, this month, uh, I, I'm doing uh, uh, the granny squares is the first full week of the month. We kind of have an extra week uh, this month because it's half March and half April. It's gonna be April soon, you guys. So this is kind of a couple bonus days. Luckily, last week, luckily we have it uh, this month because last week we spent the whole week making face masks for the nurses in town here, uh, John's aunt and her um, her her staff. Uh, and uh, so we got a we pushed this project a week, and luckily we have bonus week, so it's all gonna work out. So next week will be the Granny Squares quilt, uh, the first full week of the month. We'll be back on it as usual. So thank you guys, uh, and I'm gonna flip you around. Let's get started here. All right, so right here, this is what we are going uh, going to work on. So it is the Dolomite Mountains. It is just some really pretty greens. The actual color of the month is green. So I'm gonna try and have this feel as greeny as I can. I do have my uh, my fabric right over there, and uh, let's let's just kind of check it out. So I have I have the pattern here. I thought. A good way to get going uh, might to might be to like look at the fabrics that we need, pick our fabrics, and then there is a so right here is kind of all the fabrics we need. So there's eight different fabrics, um, and then right here is kind of a template of where all the pieces end up going. So after this page are all of our uh, little pieces here so so we don't get too confused I thought we'd color in color in this uh, with the fabric that we want uh, so I am going to uh, let's pick our fabrics I'm gonna raise you up high here let's uh, make sure that we can see that and uh, see what we can pick I think I'll start with the greens and it looks like there are three different greens. So meadow one, two, and three. Let's see if we can isolate them. Okay, so there's one here, it looks like, and then these two colors. So a dark and a light, dark, light, and then kind of like a little, um, little baby one over there. So I am picking fabrics out of my fat quarter bin here. So let's start with some pretty greens. Um, so, um, I mean, here is a good one. We could start with that. That's a pretty nice 
green. Uh, this would be maybe fun as the main big, like maybe it's that dark green because it's in two big chunks there. Uh, let's see what else would be cute with this. You know, I do have a couple solids right here. Oh, maybe we do this. So this could be our light green, the light green here and our dark green. I kind of like that. And then, oh, how about that? So then this can be our tiny pop of green over here. Uh, I kind of like this as a more of the main green just because it's got a cool pattern on it. Um, so yes, Paula. So it is, it can be either. So in her instructions, she has done it uh, raw edge applique. So I thought I'd do it that way. Um, but it, it can be paper piece. So I know some people are paper piecing it. I know it looks paper pieced for sure. I think she has supplemental instructions, Paula, for paper piecing it. But since we're doing paper piecing for the uh, um, our current block in the Splendid Sampler 2, I thought we'd I thought we'd stick to this. So okay, I'm gonna do these, and uh, all right, let's let's pick our mountains. So you guys, this is kind of my background fabric. I kind of almost want this to be the sky, just to have it feel like the rest of my quilt. So I think I'm going to go with this for the sky. So this actually won't be um, the grays. I mean, in theory, it could be, there's two different grays. It could be my gray, but I think, I think I want it for the sky. Oh yeah. So Sylvia, I, I, I think I'm going to do the sky for this. So uh, I'm just kind of like laying out the scene right here. So we have our green. I need some mountaintop or some, uh, I need two colors. I need like a gray, two different grays, but it still has to look right on here. So let's see how we can do that. And you know what? This just popped out at me for no reason, but instead of a lake, we could almost do flowers. Like it could be a meadow in front in front here. I'm kind of, I kind of actually really like that idea. I mean, this just was kind of yelling at me from inside the bin. Um, that's kind of fun. Should we do a should we do a meadow instead of a lake? I kind of like that. Let's see if we have another floral sitting in here. We could do a we could do that instead. So I want kind of a greeny floral. We have this kind of Oh, that's a little that's a little bit much, I think. I'm kind of trying to keep it limited to what I got in here. Oh, there's some flowers. Should we try? <laughs> this is a little bizarre, but it's kind of fun, right? Should we do um, do these two instead of instead of a, a lake? Should we do flowers? I kind of like that. I'm not positive about this one, but um, what else do we got? I do want it to feel a little bit different than the green. So it's almost like it's green, green, green. And then it's almost like we're up close here, right? And then we're seeing the green mountains in the distance, right? So we're like walking through the meadow uh, and, uh, you know, big flowers. And then it's getting smaller and smaller and smaller into the distance. So I kind of, that's why I kind of like the, the meadow idea. All right. I think this will be our kind of this color blue. And this can be our those front two triangles. All right. I'm kind of digging that. Wow. All right. So we still need, we still need some mountain tops here. All right. What should those look like? So they need to be lighter than, than this, I think. So let's, what do we got for grays? Not really that much. We have some kind of white colors. I mean, this is kind of part of that same collection. That's a little too light. We need it to be darker. Here's a gray. Here's a couple of grays. Let's see see what these end up looking like. Gosh, this is almost, this feels a whole lot like this gray here. It's kind of fun. A big old stripe. <laughs> I don't know about the stripe. And I think this is actually maybe a little a little dark against my background. All right, I don't know if I like either of those. Let's let's see what else we have. That's maybe too dark. So now here's some kind of rocky looking stuff. Could go like that maybe. 
there. That that maybe jumps a little bit off here a little bit better. Ooh, that's got a lot going on. <laughs> Some golden, golden mountains. I don't know. Ski trails. Oh, that, it does kind of look like some ski trails. What else? We got this kind of weird, rocky. I don't know if I like that. Wow, this is tough. There's a lot of colors in in this one, isn't there? Oh, then I just have a plain gray. That's not actually too bad. Should we do this one instead? This one might actually be light enough that we can see on the background. Why don't we do this one as, well, we could do this one as the one in front, like this one, the darker one, and then we could do two, these two lighter ones in back. I think we gotta just kind of go with, with this at some point. So I'm gonna flip, flip it kind of flat here. Uh, we do need a white as well, so uh, we need like the mountaintop bit. So we could go, I think we need to go a lot brighter than that. Should we do a, like a little, this is kind of like a snowy, a snowy kind of blue white. That might work. That's kind of pretty. Let's do that. So here's our little top of the mountain. These these little bits right there. I don't know. I, I kind of like it. I think we got I think we got enough going on here, and I think it feels like we got a lot of green. And this is kind of the green the green month. So I think let's go with it. I like it. All right. So the next part is I want to just color code everything so I don't get super confused. And I think that's probably where we're going to land tonight. I just want to color code this so I know what letter goes with what. I mean, I do have it. I do have it here as well. But I'm going to have a few issues and and I'm going to tell you that right now. First of all, um the designer she is fusing this all onto uh, another piece of um, like a, a piece of interfacing, and I don't have any of that in the house. You know, where where is we're in the house? We're trying to use the things that are in the house here. So I don't actually have a, a non-woven fusible or non-woven um, interface to to use as my base for the background. Um, I could probably just use this, but I also have, I have some white, just some white cotton, um, and it's been washed because I, I was making, this is what I was using for the back of the masks. Uh, it's just a really nice soft cotton. I think this might work. So it's nice and thin. Uh, you know, we're going to add a, a layer of thickness to um, to the block by having it, but I think I'm going to use this as what I fuse my items onto. Um, I don't know if that's the best idea, but again, I'm just kind of working with what I have here. So I think we'll, we'll fuse everything onto this. The other little situation that we are going to have to work our way through is... I only have, here's my fusible web. Uh, I only have one piece left of this, I think. Yep, so this is my last piece of fusible. And last time we used this, it didn't even stick very well anymore. <laughs> so there is no way on a big 12 inch block that this is gonna get me far enough. So like, like look at these pieces. They are huge, right? So what I might do is cut this into a bunch of little strips, like some little skinny, like quarter inch, uh, quarter inch strips and I might just put them on the edges of all of these so and I think that's actually what uh, Pat Sloan I think does this often she'll do just a little bit of an edge and then and then trim it off later so I think I think that's what I might do I might just trim a whole pile of little edges and just fuse them around each shape so to do that um, I think I'm going to cut out my fabric pieces uh, first, which is a little bit 
unusual. Usually I cut out the fusible and then put it on the fabric. But again, we're in a little bit of a pickle here. Uh, I probably could use glue stick too. That might be an option, Dawn, as well. Um, just because that might be my only option. <laughs> so anyway, that is that is my uh, that's my current state of the state. Uh, it's either going to be this one sheet or some glue. Uh, but those are my problems for tomorrow. <laughs> Tonight I am just going to try and just because I think it's going to help me out. I'm going to try and color code color code this really quickly with the colors that I'm using. So I do have my colored pencils here. Now this totally isn't necessary, but I find it helpful, especially when it's late at night and, um, and it, you know, I, the less I have to use my brain later, the better. So I am going to uh, color this out. So let's, uh, let's start with, um, my background. So I'm thinking it's these guys right here. I am still looking at the iPad, but let's just double check. Um, okay. So this would be, okay. The sky blue I'm re doing this. I'm replacing the sky blue with my dark color here just cause it's my other background fabric. So I want to do that. So, okay. A, B, C, D, A, B, C, D. All right. So I'm going to color that in with a similar color and I'm just doing it really rough and and quick. I just want a reminder for myself what that I chose these particular fabrics for particular places so I don't have to remember. So this is a dark gray, kind of like my dark gray fabric. And an extra reminder, I might even just put some of my purple stripes in there, right? Purple stripe, purple stripe, purple, purple, there. I will absolutely know <laughs> it's that right there. Oh, strips will work. Make them at least a half inch. Oh, or three quarter inches better. Okay, I will do that. Uh, Tracy, I am not on YouTube tonight. Uh, I've just been, um, I've been uh, uh, having issues with going on both and I barely made it on tonight. So I thought I better get on, on uh, YouTube. Uh, honestly, I think I need a souped up computer. Uh, a little bit more souped up computer than what I have now. So we're just, we're still kind of working through that a little bit. Um, I am hoping that later in the week I will make it over there though again. So, yep. Sorry, tonight I am just, just over here. All right. I pulled out gray just because that was the next color I saw here. So let's, let's figure that out. Okay. That would be light granite. Okay. O and P. Okay. O and P. And since we're here, let's do that cute little blue. So I want to find a little blue. There, I think, um, obviously it's JQS, but let's double check. Okay, mountaintop white, JQS. All right, so I'm going to just draw little speckles in here because that's kind of what the fabric looks like. It's got those little blue speckles. All right, what is this R? Oh, okay, so we got this crazy kind of mottled brown color. I'm not completely positive about that color, but I think it'll be fine. Oh, there, that's a gold. Let's let's do it like that. Uh, I think that's the only spot. I'm pretty positive, but let's look. Yep, dark granite is R. All right, so I'm going to just color it in with this gold, and let's just... Let's just draw a bunch of squiggles through it because it's kind of, it kind of looks like that, doesn't it? Just, just a bunch of little, little squiggles. That'll be enough for me to know what it is. <laughs> okay, let's, let's do that one. All right, here's a, here's a kind of a neon-y looking, oh, that's almost exactly it. All right, that's good. Okay, I, I'm guessing it's M and K. Let's call that... Okay, Meadow 2 is M and K. All right. And just so I know that it's not this light one, I'm going to just draw those kind of um, 
architectural trees in there. So we'll just draw a bunch of little, <laughs> little circles here. That's kind of fun. That'd be a cute polka dot. All right, that is that. Let's find a dark green. Here we go. That's a good green. Okay, this would be I L. Okay, so meadow one. Ooh, wow! Look at that green. This is fun. I'm I'm excited about the garden or like the the floral aspect of this. This may look a mess, but it is going to be so helpful for me later once we're going through, you know, template pieces and I got to be like, well, what the heck is E? I can immediately look. Okay, it's right there. So I do like this process. I know it's a little, little extra stuff, but I like it. Okay, E is the last little meadow piece. This will be just our light kind of minty green. I think I'll remember... By process of elimination, I will know what that one is. Okay, what do we got here? Oh, here's our garden stuff. So I think, I don't know which one I want to go where. I think I'm going to do this as um, H and N. Okay, so let's color that. I'm going to just color it yellow. And then we'll add a whole pile of, oh, I'm getting fancy now here. Let's add some blue flowers and let's add some little red flowers. Okay, I don't, can't find reds. Let's use this pink. These are going to be the baby flowers. So I know it's not this one with the giant flowers. And for funsies, I think that will do the job. But for fun, let's add... Let's add some blue in there, too. There. <laughs> it matches perfectly. <laughs> All right. And last up, we got our kind of our green, our pale green with the light or with the giant florals. So let's just get our green in there. And let's put a big old flower in here. This is big flower land. Oh, I want to keep drawing. This is fun. <laughs> Let's add some of those other little baby flowers in here. All right. I think that is pretty clear. I think this will help us out quite a bit. Um, and you know what, guys? I think we might actually uh, call it a night here. Uh, tomorrow, I know it's a little early, but... Um, I think it'll be a better starting spot if we can work on this tomorrow. You know what? We could trim a bunch of these so they're ready to go. Uh, why don't we do that? I will trim, we'll trim like half this sheet and uh, uh, we will uh, use those for later. So I think I am going to do like the three quarters of an inch. That should maybe get us the whole way, right? We'll see. What's the light green fabric for? Oh, this right here? This is just that one tiny little piece over there. <laughs> so in the in the design, all this is blue to go with um, a lake. But I kind of like, I mean, maybe at the bottom of the Dolomites, it actually has a lake. Um, so they're going to be my little mountains instead with a little, little uh, field of flowers in front of in front of it. <laughs> yeah, don't go. All right, I won't go quite yet, Tracy. This is every every little step we do on this is going to get us farther along. So, so this is good. We'll just cut all this up. Oh, the other thing we could do is I could cut out I'll cut out the templates from the paper. I know that's just super busy work but again it is it is part of the process isn't it i wanted to thank you guys for joining me in the evenings here it is just awesome to see you every night and especially uh through all this coronavirus stuff it is just you know nice to <laughs> hang out with friends for a little bit in the evening so i, I appreciate it a ton and it makes my day better, so 
I'm happy to have you guys here. Oh, there is a lake, so it's either Lake Como or Lake Majori. Majori, I don't know. Oh, Shirley. <laughs> so Shirley is asking what the strips are for. The strips are because I only have one more piece of my fusible web. So instead of trying to cut out all these giant shapes, I am going to just kind of use little strips on the edges and I'm going to see if if that works. <laughs> so I, I'm, I'm just cutting up the rest of what I've got. And this is super old too, so it's not even sticking very well. And I got these little bubbles in. So this is going to be it for... Um, Oh, you guys are sweet. Uh, this is going to be it for my fusible. I'm going to have to get an order in. Try some other fusible webs and stuff as well. All right, let's, let's do... This will be the last one. Then I have a little sheet left over if I need it. But all right, so we will <laughs> we will keep those. Yes, this surely this is a whole like when I was trying to set up for tonight, I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm not I don't have anything to work on this project. I don't have so I don't have the interface for the the back either. So I'm gonna use a piece of um, white. I'm gonna use this piece of white uh, just cotton that I have. <laughs> I don't know if that's the best idea, but that's what I'm gonna do. Uh, so all of it will be kind of fused onto onto there. Oh, Nolene, you're sweet. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, I know. I got to get on Amazon Prime. That's right, Grace, for sure. All right. Oh, yeah. I was going to cut out all these. So let's see if I can, if that's all of them. Yep. All right. So let's, let's trim these. Um, now, there was one instruction in here that I wasn't quite sure about. So we'll address that tomorrow. All right, I think I can just cut on these dotted lines. Yeah, this is, these are just the paper cutouts. Yep. Um, so she, for her fusible, she actually trimmed the fusible on the dotted line and not the actual line so that there's some overlap. But I'm not quite sure how well that's going to work because not everything's going to overlap perfectly. So I, I don't know. We're going to, we're going to give it a go. Some of it's got to be big and then other ones have got to overlap those so I'm not quite sure but we're gonna tr give it a try and see see what happens you know I could color code these as well but I think um I think my guide here will do that job for me well oh gosh and I apologize for the nails today too I've been uh I've been working on making boxes all day and uh it chips away all my polish, and I didn't have time to redo it. Do you have some muslin? Oh, could you use that for the base? Lucy, that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to use that white kind of cotton muslin that I have. And I think, I don't see why that wouldn't work. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to try. And luckily, I've washed it, so I know it's kind of pre-shrunk, too. All right. One scrap done. There are just a ton of these. So Gretchen, I was actually thinking about that. I think this would be fabulous for English paper piecing. I don't see why this wouldn't work at all. And I actually, when I when I discovered that I didn't really have all all the supplies available, um, I considered doing it English paper piecing. But then I was like, ah, but I don't have a thick piece of paper, like a thick kind of cardboard. Oh, I suppose I could have found like a manila folder to trace these on. Yeah, that'd be a good idea. If you guys have like a manila folder and trace or put these uh, templates onto that, that would be perfect. The perfect like thickness for English paper piecing. Yeah, Jenna, I, um, oh, <laughs> thanks, Charla. Charla says, we're in quarantine. Who cares about nails? Ah, there you go. That's, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> Oh, I was doing so good at it for a while, too. Uh, okay, so Jenna said I found these instructions to be confusing. I did a little bit, too, just because it's different than my norm. And, it, I mean, that's kind of what I find exciting about these quilt-alongs sometimes, is that I can try out other people's techniques and everything and see 
see what that's like. Like, for example, I don't know if I would have fused this to that extra piece of fabric or the, the interfacing in fabric in my case. Uh, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, the part that I, I'm going to have to read over again, and, and she has a tutorial, I believe, too. Um, I think there's a link to that from the Aurifil blog post. Oh, look, I, I did this on recycled paper. It's my Splendid Sampler 1 uh, pages, so you might see some Splendid Sampler 1 pop up. But yeah, the part I'm a little confused about is these edges. Like, I, I get the idea that you want to overlap raw edge applique, but, like, what's the front piece? Like, the front piece has to be, you know, not overlapped. Suggestion, trace the shapes onto freezer paper, iron. Oh, that would be a good idea. Trace the shapes onto freezer paper, iron to the front of the fabric and stabilize it, and then cut it. Okay, I really like that idea. Maybe I should do that. Let's see. <laughs> we do have a ton of pieces here. Um, oh gosh, you know what? I don't even know if these are, are these reversed or not? Let's, let's see. Okay, here is, here's the M piece. Oh no, this, this looks like the same shape as the M. So they're not reversed. So I would have to trace them on this side. Ugh. That's a good idea, that freezer paper. I wonder if I have that immediately near me. Freezer paper. Ooh, I think I see it. Okay. All right, I like that idea. <laughs> um, all right, so we're gonna we're gonna do this again. Oh, look, I have a tiny piece here. So now here's the trick. So with freezer paper, the nice thing about freezer paper is the glossy side kind of sticks to fabric really well. Um, but you'd fuse it. Oh, I suppose we could fuse it to the front of the fabric. Okay, that's what we're going to do. All right, you guys, <laughs> I have another, I got a plan for this now. Uh, I am going to fuse this to the front of the fabric and that will help it. No, don't reverse because you'll press on the right side of the fabric. Okay, perfect. Perfect, Lucy. Um, all right, let's grab a pencil. Okay, we're switching game plans here. So we lost a little bit of time doing this but i'm gonna just trace it real 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 quick here so we just have to remember that it's the correct side and these don't have to be super duper perfect my my drawings don't have to but i'm gonna want to cut them down so they're really nice and sharp and pretty okay E. So this is a little bit of an of an extra step. Oh, I have I have more more of the roll here. This was just probably an extra piece from last time we used it. I got some more. All right, so I am you know that inner piece is the real important piece, the inner line. But like I said, she had the designer cut out this edge too which that's the part that's a little bit new to me so I think eventually we may have to trim part of that down so I'm gonna want my fusible to over overlap that a bit yep this will definitely you're right this will definitely save me time in the long run, like especially when we're cutting out our paper, our fabric, this is gonna just be so much easier. For sure, this was that was a smart idea, good thinking. And I mean, I'm going super fast, so you could go, you could make your lines a little bit better. You could even use a ruler, but again, I will I will work harder when we're actually cutting out the shape. 
I'm, I'm trying to get these inner lines maybe a little bit better so I know the actual shape and I'll try and um, um, go to that. Actually, you know, this freezer paper could really stay on until we're just about done, don't you think? Oop, G. Upside down G. Like the entire time we're working on it, this could stay until we're ready to, well, I don't know. We'll get to that. <laughs> Again, that's a tomorrow problem. We got a lot of tomorrow problems. Today, let's just deal with today's problems. Oh, Charlotte says, I love uh, watching you work through problems. It makes me smile. Ah, all of the problems. I am excited that um, to figure this out with what I have on hand, though. Although, I'm going to be sad when I'm out of all my, my fusibles, so I will have to put in an order for that. But uh, last time, it just my fusible just is not working anymore. That was kind of our problem last time. Oh, we're all cut up. Look, this is my last cutout one. Last time we used the fusible, it just wasn't sticking very well anymore. So it was, it's time to get... Ooh, that doesn't fit. Time to get new stuff anyway. Where did you go? Oh, you fit perfectly that way. So yeah, I'm gonna have to start a start a stuff list, a sewing list again for Amazon. I've been just or for wherever. I've just been uh holding off getting more sewing stuff, but man, when you run out of those nice tools that you're used to working with gets to be a big bummer although this might be really nice we might actually like not fusing the entire piece down it'll feel like a lot lighter i think um so we'll just get the edge with that fusible i think this might be kind of nice we will see i think that's an n Oh, you've used a fusible tape when out of sheets of fusible. Oh, that's I think that's kind of basically this, that idea, so that's great. Does the freezer paper come off clean or does it leave some behind? No, Jennifer, it comes off perfectly clean. I have never had an issue uh, with the freezer paper before. I mean, maybe someone else has a different experience, but I find it a little bit magical. I, I haven't had any any issue with it at all. I mean, usually I'm not fusing it on the front, but um, I still haven't really had that big of an issue. Wow, we're actually getting quite a few pieces out of out of this sheet, aren't we? All right, that can kind of squeeze in here. Oh, I moved a little bit. It's nice to sometimes not have it all perfectly laid out and have some sort of problem that you got to figure out on these things. <laughs> it makes it more exciting when you actually do kind of figure it out. Oh, I got real close to the edge here. Ooh, I feel good about that line. All right. Oh, Lucy says she's never had any issues with the freezer paper, and she's ironed it on the front a bunch of times. Oh, and Dawn's never had uh, any issues either. Holy cow, you guys. There's a million pieces here. And you know what? I think I missed one. Do we have a letter J? Nope, this guy. This guy was hiding... Okay, that does not look like a J. There we go. The nice thing about freezer paper, too, is it's just at the grocery store. It's not a specialty item at all. 
Oh, whoops. Thanks, Jenna. Uh, let's, let's get that on there. This was the M, wasn't it? Yeah. All right. Ooh, just this little space left. We're definitely going to need a new sheet here. It's kind of fun little puzzly problem trying to fit these on here. All right, there we are. L. Yep, totally an extra step here, but it is going to just make things, it's going to make life easier tomorrow for sure. I, I can tell already. Um, so I'm, I'm, ex I'm happy for this. And I think, you know, I'll use this to cut out my fabric pieces, but I think I can leave it on while I fuse the fusible paper, our little strips onto the other side. I think I can leave it on, which would be awesome because it would add, add that stiffness. So I think that's going to be a nice little deal. Then once those um, things are stuck on, then we can uh, kind of lay it out and then do our final trimming. All right, L. What else is on here? Oh, P. Okay. All right. Done with L. Let's uh, let's get a new sheet. What do we got going on here? Oh my gosh, there's a ton here yet. Hooey, man. There's a lot of pieces on this guy, but he's going to be pretty dang cute. I am excited for all these flowers here. All right, I'm going to throw my fusibles up here for now. It's crazy how fast you can have a mess. <laughs> I have a... This table is like a crazy mess already. All right, this is a... Quite a bit more than I needed, but um, I'll just use some more later, like I did with this this one. Did I write the letter on that one? Yeah, I did. L. I remember. Done with that. We have three more sheets to go here. We're like going in reverse order, it looks like. Yeah, so if, if, um, if I had all the fusible that I needed, I would have just traced this onto my fusible web and then cut it out from there. But since I am low on that, uh, that's why we're going this other route. I mean, if you have enough of your like fusible interfacing, um, that fusible web for raw edge applique, you could just totally go go with that. All right, R. I think we'll be able to fit this K up in this corner here. Yep, I'm gonna have to read the instructions again, though. I do, you do want some overlap, but I don't want the whole, like every piece doesn't need the overlap, I don't think. So we'll figure it out. Like I said, that's that's tomorrow's issue. All right, R. This fits perfectly. Yep, this would have been a good John job. <laughs> All 
right. Done with that page. Two more. Wow, maybe we will actually fill up this this paper here yet. Oh, <laughs> Sally says my hand is so steady. I don't know, I'm feeling feeling like it's a bit jittery today. It's easy as I get the straightest line when I just pick a spot and then I slide my whole hand over. That's definitely, like when I try and move the pencil, that's when it messes up. So if I just go one spot and, oh gosh, slide down. Oh, obviously, now it's working horribly, but maybe it's just the certain angles work better than others. <laughs> Don't know. Doing my best. I think that particular angle is tough. All right, B. I didn't do any of these ones yet. Let's see if that can fit up here. There, that looks good. Oh, you can buy freezer paper that goes through your printer. Ooh. Um, yeah, I bet you it's just cut down to size. So, hmm. I suspect I would have to fuse it to a different piece of paper because I have a, you know, the heat from like a laser printer. I, I don't think, I don't think it would, like it would fuse to my laser printer roller, I would think. But um, I bet you if I fused it to a piece of paper first, because you can use the freezer paper more than once. That's what's kind of magical about it too. So if you have a lot of the same pieces that you have to make, you might only have to do like one template, which is pretty cool. Okay, just this eye piece. Ooh, this just fits perfect. Okay, I See, like those feel like decently straight lines. Oh, an ink printer. Yeah, like a um, an inkjet printer. I do not currently have a functioning one of those. All right, one more to go. I'm glad I picked, I'm glad I ripped off a uh, large, large, um, large piece of paper. I'm kind of far over here. Let's, there you go. Maybe you guys can see a little bit better then. So I am still behind on uploading the embroidery of the month to YouTube. And I know I have a couple YouTubes up there that didn't work out um, that I was trying on Friday and all that a couple times where we couldn't get connected very well. So I'll delete those and I still have to get the um, Bumblebee last uh, couple days of stitching that up. Uh, I will try and do that as soon as I can, and then this video will go up on YouTube, too, as a replay. I'm getting there. All right, let's, let's do this big one. So, sorry for the uh, YouTube upload delay. Okay, F and Q here. Wow. We got pretty far up in the alphabet on this, uh, on, uh, on these pieces. Oh, I'm excited to, um, press these onto the real fabric tomorrow. 
Wow, I'm glad I'm glad we got this done though, because this this would have been annoying to do tomorrow when I just want to play with fabric. So we're getting all all the prep work done today. That is a good a good day. All right, you guys, look at all the pieces. Um, I think I'll wait to cut these out till tomorrow. I think I'll cut them out as I go. So like. You know, I'll look at the, okay, I need everything that's this color. I will just cut those out. Here's the other other pieces right here. Um, and then I'll just keep going till I have it all cut out so I'm not, like, way confused. I'll just leave it leave it together until, until it's ready to go. So awesome, you guys. I think that's where we will call it. We have a plan. I am loving the colors. Again, here is... This is what we're going for right there, except for instead of the lake, uh, I'm doing I'm doing like a meadow. <laughs> so uh, the the mountain is gonna just extend, keep extending down into the meadow. Here's kind of my my color guide there. <laughs> I'm stoked. I am liking this plan. I'm liking our colors. We are all prepped, ready to go. All right, I'm gonna flip you around. We will call it an evening here. There. Hello. Uh, thank you guys again so much for joining me here tonight. Yes, they are so much bigger than the Splendid Sampler too. So we have been used to working at like a little six inch square. This is a 12 inch one. So it's just a totally different feel. <laughs> it's a shock to me when I see template pieces as big as these are because we've just been working on those teeny tiny squares. Um, so, oh, awesome, you're going to make some masks tomorrow. Oh, and thank you guys, everyone who has been sharing that uh, YouTube uh, post of the mask, uh, how we did that mask um, on Monday, last Monday. Uh, I think people are really liking it, and and uh, um, there's so many different masks, masks out there to make, uh, so it's just neat to see uh, people liking that one. So, awesome. Uh, all right, I will see you guys tomorrow. I will get this up on YouTube and um, we will have, uh, I'll get those other embroidery ones up as well. Oh, Anna, so I am here every weeknight at 8.30 p.m. Central Time. So you can just join me every night here on Facebook and uh, we are going to go on um, YouTube as well when we can. Uh, this is a free project. So what we're working on now is a free project from the Orophil, uh, which is the thread company, Orophil Thread, uh, their blog. So right below this post in Facebook, there will be links to get to this project. It's a free download. So you can join in with us. We'll be working on it all week. And I think for sure we'll finish this one this week for sure. All right. Thanks, you guys. Have a good evening. Good night.